Today we got a big patient on the workbench. We got an upright freezer. I'm gonna diagnose it, hopefully fix it, but along the process show you how it works. So if this video can help anybody else out there, it will. So keep watching. This is a frost-free upright freezer that just stopped cooling completely. Um, the interior light still works, so we got power, but we're gonna diagnose it. Um, I've pulled out some of the shelves, some of the screws. So I have it lifted up on the workbench just so you guys can see in the back better. And I do have it plugged in. And as you can see, we have power. The light comes on. Our thermostat is turned to the coldest. It makes no difference. Turn to the coldest. No sound, no nothing. So we'll step back here. And one of the first things we notice is this one's actually nice. They actually have it printed on the back. A lot of times it's a little piece of paper that's folded up that's tucked in you know somewhere back here but we can see our wiring diagram and it's pretty freaking basic it, you got the exact plug right here you so you have your plug you have your little neutral neutral right here you have your ground and you have your line which is the power coming in and you come over here and it just shows so this whole side is hot and then it shows you what it feeds so comes over here feeds a um cold control so this is your thermostat comes down here feeds a door switch so when the switch opens and it comes across here and there's your interior light it comes over to the neutral so we open our door it gets power so we know power is coming through here um, this is a little like a little LED light green light on the front that lights up just to show that it has power on um, but this is our thing right here. We are not getting cooling at all. So we kind of want to dive into how all this stuff works. And we notice it goes from our cold control, which is our thermostat, to a timer control. And then from there, it goes to our compressor, a fan, a defrost. So we're just going to look at all this stuff. So our thermostat is the main heart that it goes through first on the wiring diagram and tells the entire system whether to turn on or off. And so after that, we have a timer control that it goes through. And this tells it whether or not to turn on a heater or to turn on the compressor to cool it. Because this is a frost free. So every, I think it's every 24 hours of runtime. It might even say on there. Yeah, every 24 hours of runtime, this turns on a heater and melts all the ice off of the um, evaporator. But that's 24 hours of runtime, not 24 hours in a day. So it might only run you know a third of the time a quarter of the time so it runs a quarter of the time this would turn the heat cycle on every four days or so just for an idea and so there's actually little notches on there and you can actually see you can see this little line right here and this little notch right here these are actually when um, the first one should be when it actually turns on the heater and probably when it cycles back on to the other thing so one thing is, is we can just turn this little knob and see if that kicks on the compressor because right now the compressor is not kicking on so this might be my whole problem is just the compressor is not kicking on it could be fried it could be not getting any juice we don't know so a couple little tools that help us is multimeter will really help you um, along with a this is a kilowatt meter they're really handy um, just your hand around the house shows you what stuff's drawing uh, I have it on watts right now. This thing is drawing nothing. If I open the door, you should see it. I don't know, what is there, a 40 watt light bulb or something in there? Um, a 6 watt light bulb. So, we've got a really low drawing light bulb in there. Close the door, it's drawing nothing. So, nothing is trying to adjust the thermostat. Nothing in my, scenario, in my situation. So, First thing is, let's trace some power. Now for a lot of this, I'm gonna be working with live power. So, you know, if you don't know how to work with live power, don't, you touch it, it shocks you, bad. So don't do this if you're scared, because everything is plugged in right now. So I'm, I'm actually going to unplug the compressor. And we have a, um, you can actually all, your whole wiring diagram up here shows you what color wire does everything, but pretty much your white is your neutral, O is, so, if we take power to an, or a um, probe to our neutral and one to the one that's supposed to be giving our compressor power, 
we get nothing. So power is not even coming to our compressor. I find a lot of times, especially on small refrigerators and stuff, um, this entire control unit right here that plugs into the side of the compressor. Um, I'll plug the whole thing. This whole thing goes bad. This one actually has a separate capacitor right here and we can measure the value of that. Just touching the ends to metal to make sure it's zeroed out. This one's supposed to be 15 microfarads and we are 14.89, that's perfect. It's um, um, 15 minus 5% plus or, you know, so it's never, a 15 microfarad is never 15, it's always under. I never find them over. So even brand new. So that's still a great capacitor, but no power to there. Uh, we don't know if this, our timer's bad or if our thermostat's bad. So let's go up and look in the thermostat. So quickly in a frost-free freezer, that's your cold air, that's where the cold air gets blown out of. It actually gets sucked through this little hole down here, blown out there, but I'll show you right behind here. Got, there's six or seven screws that I removed. The whole thing just pulls out of the way. And there you go. There's your evaporator. And what that does is the Freon, essentially, this is R134A, so technically not Freon, but runs back and forth through here. This little fan right here just blows air through the back of the housing and out there, but it sucks the air across these. Um, down on the bottom, you might have heard me mention the heating circuit. There's a little just actual, the same thing that's like in an oven or stove. It's actually just a heater element that just melts this off. And it's just so it melts the ice off for you. Um, so every 24 hours of run time, it does that. So if your freezer is not cooling, and you unload everything. Yeah, you got to pretty much unload everything. And you open this up. And this whole thing is just a chunk of ice. Like the whole thing is just iced up. There's a chance that either your timer's not working going to the heat cycle. Or your actual heater is broken. Or the little thermostat right here that controls when to turn the th heater on and off is broken. And you can measure the voltages um, across all those. Very basic wiring. Extremely basic. So now that we, this is all live, I do have power running into everything, so I'm going to be careful, but I'm going to show you. This is your thermostat, and all it does is take power from the black wire and pushes it over to the blue. That's it. So all we should be able to, all we really need to do is measure the power on it. So I will pull up a, uh, we can probably get a reading, we'll back probe one of these white wires to get our neutral and then we'll just see blue nothing so no power is going through I've got power right there to one side of my thermostat not to the other one side not to the other my thermostat isn't passing power now I can easily just unplug this and I could put a jumper in between those and test it now it would run as long as it as long as it would I mean it would run indefinitely but I would be able to actually check out my entire system, make sure it's completely cooling, make sure all these um, turn it on, and within five, well, not even that, two, three, four minutes, all these cooling fins, you can just follow them up. They should all get ice cold um, and start developing frost on all of them. Now, if you're having problems with free if with um, cooling and it's not, you know, it's not keeping up cooling, and only the very top maybe top two bars after five or ten minutes are frosting up and you can actually come down and actually feel almost just room temperature warm down on some of the lower ones then your whole system is low on freon or you have a compressor problem like a broke broken reed valve or something else like that all the power is completely disconnected because this would be live otherwise and i've just got a um this is just a piece of copper that I have special just for this sort of thing. I slide it into one spade, slide the other spade over to that, and that just works like my thermostat it is cold enough to turn it on, or warm enough, technically. So, the thermostat gets too warm, just connects those, gets cold enough, disconnects them. That's all it does. Thermostat wire just comes over here and just sits right here. It's just a, a, a tube. It's actually like a, a, a hollow tube 
the, the um, I can't think of off the top of my head, but the, the metal or something in here, uh, it might be mercury, comes in here and it physically pushes on a little switch, little accordion thing, kind of cool, but um, now I'll be able to plug it in and we'll see exactly what happens when that's plugged in. It should just kick on, let's put it to watts so I can see exactly how many watts it draws and plug in. Presser kicked on, drawing 200, 146 watts. There we go. The compressor is running. So my entire problem is the thermostat. The little fan is running. It's actually not working exactly like it should because this actually acts as a deflector. So now it's just pulling air from everywhere instead of across the actual cooling fans, fins. So you can see we're icing up. Comes across this top one back. It stays on the front. Oh no, then it goes back through there and then up to here, but I'm icing up three down. I guess that's a uh, five down. So yeah, we're icing up good. So we're not low on um, refrigerant at all. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and cold. Um, but there we go. Everything's working as it should. You can see my, my bypass right there. So all I need to do is replace that. So a whopping $7 and we have a brand new one. So we'll just put that in. I'll just bend it up the exact same. You can see this tube. You don't want to kink this. Okay, it's completely unplugged. So there's no power to it. So I can take that off. Let me plug these back on. It's cruising along, everything's working. I can actually see that this has actually moved um, in the time I've had it running. Now if I turn this, I can manually turn it. See this little notch right here? I can actually test the heater circuit. I can go inside and feel it, but I can also just, I can watch my how many watts my meter's drawing. So we, there we go. Let's keep waiting. Let's see if we can get it to manually kick on the heater. See how many watts? 750 watts. Yeah. Oh, now it turned itself off. That heater draws so much, you know, so it's a, it'll turn itself on and off as it defrosts the um, circuit. There we go. $700 freezer for $7 in repair and maybe 15 minutes of diagnostic time. Um, now, if you're wondering what the difference between this and a non-frost free one, it's pretty simple. Instead of having the evaporator and the frost up back there, the evaporator is actually your shelves. So your fixed shelves actually have those same coils running through them. And you don't have the heating circuit, you don't have the timing circuit. There's a lot more simplicity and they're actually better built generally. But there you go. So it's been sitting a couple hours, just came out, it's not running, which is good. That means it's cycling. This is one of those things that's the worst part of owning a truck and the best part. The worst part is, as is the person, the way I ended up with this is the person, the family member, well, the family of the family member, hey, you have a truck, can you go get our new one? And then when I was there, I asked them what they were doing with the old one, and they didn't want it. So, so that's me. So that wins me because I have a truck, and loses me because I have a truck. But, you know, you got to do nice things for people, and nice things for yourself. Looks like we're maintaining on the warmest setting. Around 9 degrees or negative, what is that in Celsius? I don't know, 13, 14 Celsius. And that's on one, the warmest, so even it would go even colder than that. But sounds like it's working perfectly. Um, let's see how warm the compressor is. There's nothing in there really to, I mean, it's been a couple hours. Eh, it's barely warm, so not a big deal. Working perfectly. Hey, you go get my drink. Go get my drink. Go. Get my drink. Did you get it?
right here. Give my hand. Thank you. I'll trade you. Perfect. You didn't even shut the door. Oh, you're so untrained. Good job.